This one's going to be fun. You're going to get wisdom and insight from this, I promise, because we're in Proverbs 4, so it's unavoidable. Welcome to another Bible study walkthrough. If you want to learn how to read the Bible, you're in the right place. Let's get to it. Proverbs 4, starting in verse 5. I pray that by the end of this, um, you'll have gleaned some helpful Bible study skills, uh, tools for your tool belt, whatever it is the Lord has for you. So hopefully you track with me, and I'll do my best to explain what I'm doing as I do it. Okay? Okay. And don't forget, we have a free 40-day Bible study program you can take in the description below. It says, get wisdom, (laughs) get insight, don't forget, and don't turn away from the words of my mouth. Whenever you read scripture, you want to make sure you understand the context. Who's talking? Who's he talking to? And why is he saying what he's saying? Those are some basic questions to ask when we read this text. So, if you back it up, What we have here is Solomon, the father, instructing his son to be wise. And then he's going to, in verse 3, explain how when he was a son with his father, David, the king of Israel, right? um, David actually taught him and said to him, and then everything you're going to see after this is going to be a quote from King David to his son Solomon. So this is King David talking to Solomon. Let your heart hold fast my words. Keep my commandments and live. And we talked about in the last episode what it means to live. Get wisdom and get insight. So I highlighted in orange everything Solomon was called to do. Let your heart hold fast. In other words, he had responsibility to over the reception of his own heart. And that's a key idea in scripture is that people uh, have the ability to be receptive or not, uh, to close their heart or to open their heart. And part of that is holding fast to the words of his father, keeping his commandments. And another way of saying it is to get wisdom. Get wisdom. Get insight. Get insight. So what we have here in verse 4 and 5, verse 5 is really expanding upon verse 4. Okay, So let me show you what I mean. When you read the Bible, a lot of times what you're going to see is that... um, some ideas will be explained in other different ways in the next verse or later on in that passage. So, for instance, we have the words of David explained as his commandments. Those are two ways to say the same thing, right? But here it's called wisdom. Or at least we can say this wisdom is found in the commandments and the words of David. Get insight. Now, what we should ask is, are wisdom and insight the same exact thing. Are they different? Are they two sides of the same coin? Is insight a version of wisdom or a dimension of wisdom? These are questions that we should ask. You can go to a Hebrew lexicon, uh, go to biblehub.com, go to Blue Letter Bible and figure out what these words are. That's your homework. Um, But for now, I'm just trying to teach you what to do when you read the Bible, when you come across words like this or ideas like this that are expanding upon each other. He says, don't forget And that's another way of saying um, to hold fast his commandments, let his heart be receptive, right? Is to get wisdom, get insight, um, and don't forget. This is interesting. What is he saying not to forget? Well, I think he'll explain when he says, and, and, the next phrase is going to be connected to not forgetting or it's going to be another way of saying not forgetting. So I want you to pay attention to that. Let's go on to the end of verse 5. And he says, And do not turn away from the words of my mouth. So when you read the Bible, it helps to make sense of how verses connect. Now, of course, verse and chapter numbers came later in history, but the point is that this is going to be one fluid thought. Verse 5 especially as a unit, is going to be connected, not just to itself, but to everything that comes after it, everything that came before it. So he said, get wisdom, get insight, don't forget, and don't turn away. Don't turn away from the words of my mouth. So is turning away here, you know, King David telling Solomon not to turn away from the words of his mouth, is turning away another way of saying not forgetting? Or is turning away another thing for Solomon not to do. I think it's another thing for Solomon not to do. Not only should he not forget, he should also not turn away. 
right? And maybe part of forgetting or, you know, the start of forgetting is choosing to turn away. So let's keep reading. And I think this is what happens when you read the Bible is you might have a question and you go, is turning away the same as forgetting or is turning away the start of forgetting? You know, when you ask questions, maybe read on at least to the end of the chapter and see if that idea is explained and, and, and fully, you know, brought out. Um, and don't just try and answer it in that one verse. Usually, usually the biblical authors, characters will actually explain themselves. So he goes on. This is David again, still talking to Solomon. Do not forsake her and she will keep you. Now, who is the her? Who in the world is this her? When did a girl come into the picture? Well, if you read the first three chapters of Proverbs, wisdom is communicated as or symbolized by a woman. And so wisdom is the last thing that David mentioned. I'll bring you back to verse 5 to refresh your memory. He said, get wisdom. Okay, get wisdom. And then he says in verse 6, don't forsake her. So this is what Solomon's called to do. Don't forsake her. And here's the result. Here's the result. She ends up keeping you. So this is not Solomon keeping himself. This is David saying, if you don't turn away from wisdom, if you don't forsake wisdom, she will end up keeping you in a good way, in a good way. Not in like an obsessive, kind of like prisoner kind of way. This is wisdom guarding, protecting, securing, establishing, right? Preserving Solomon or anyone who will keep their eyes on her and not turn away from her. So I think we have the answer to our question, which is, is turning away uh, part of forgetting? Is it another way of saying forget? I think turning away is explained here as not forsaking, which is another way of saying not to forget, not forget. So we have three different ways of explaining the same idea. Don't forget wisdom. Don't turn away from wisdom. Don't forsake wisdom. And she will keep you. Another way of saying not to forsake, because think about this, Solomon is told, don't forsake wisdom. Okay, and then he's told to love her, right? That's a positive statement. To do something, this is a negative statement. Do not do something, right? So, what I think is this is the same way of saying don't forsake her. To love her. Those are your two options. You have two Options. I know I'm writing in my Bible. Some of you are offended. You can get over it. <laughs> you can learn. You can read them. Uh, write in your Bible. I promise. It's okay. Um, he says, "Love her, and she will guard you." So, if you didn't know what the keeping was, all you had to do was read a little bit, and you would have seen that the keeping is actually a guarding. It's a protection. She acts as like a bodyguard, kind of in this scenario. Is you love instead of forsaking, you love. So these ideas right here are actually contrasted. Pay attention to contrasts in the Bible. It'll really make sense of the text. Don't forsake her and she'll keep you, comma, love her and she will guard you. So instead of forsaking her, I should love her. Those are two different ideas. How will you treat wisdom? Well, apparently you have the choice to turn away and forsake her entirely or you choose to love and cherish wisdom because she keeps you and guards you. So here are two reasons to, you know, stay focused on and not neglect wisdom. She'll guard you and she'll keep you, right? We often love things that protect us and provide us security. And so Solomon is saying, my father David told me not to forsake wisdom, but to keep her. And I have loved her and she's guarded me, just like he said. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. And whatever you get, get insight. 
get insight. So the question becomes, um, let's use yellow. Am I getting wisdom or am I getting insight? I don't think we have to choose. Some of you might think we do, but these are going to come together. Wisdom and insight are going to come as a package or there are two ways of saying the same idea, explaining the same idea or insight is another dimension of wisdom, right? But notice how the beginning of wisdom is this get wisdom and whatever you get, get insight. I'll tell you, the word get is used three times in one verse. Now, you might think, yeah, so what? It's just another verb. Well, when I see a repeating word in the Bible, especially this close to each other, like in the same chapter, in the same passage, I'm going to highlight that. Because there's something, there's an idea that's being communicated as very important. Repetition means important. So the beginning of wisdom is to get it. Whatever you get, get insight. Almost like whatever you get in life, let insight be your priority, which is another way of saying wisdom or another dimension of wisdom, meaning it's your choice to get wisdom. How do you start becoming wise? Apparently, you just get wisdom when it's offered. Anyone, meaning this is just a general get. It doesn't say when. It doesn't say. It just says get it, which tells me this. Anyone at any point in their life, wherever they're at, whatever they are, can choose to change modes or relationships with wisdom. If you've been forsaking wisdom and turning away from wisdom, you can choose right now to begin getting wisdom and start the path of becoming wise. That can start today. Prize her. Prize her, right? So you, you told me to get wisdom. I should have highlighted this in orange because I said love her, not forsake her, don't turn away. But now he says prize her. So this is another way of saying how we should treat wisdom. He told us up here, or David told Solomon, to love wisdom, right? Now when I tell you to prize something, that's a little different. Right, because you think love, like just you know, whatever context you've been, you grew up in, you have a definition of love, and we all have an idea of what that is. But to prize something is a little different, a little different, right? And so, to our relationship with wisdom should be prizing and loving, prize her highly, highly. Now, what's interesting to me is he could have just stopped at prize her, but he adds on this this adjective, this adverb. That's right, I went to grammar school. This adverb to explain how much you should prize wisdom very highly, right? And just like she keeps you and guards you, she will exalt you. So notice, there's three things so far that wisdom does when you get wisdom, when you love her, and when you prize her, right? She keeps you, she guards you, she actually will exalt you. Wisdom here is doing something to you. You're not doing it to yourself. You ain't making it happen, right? But wisdom, when applied, when you walk in wisdom, there's something God does through that to exalt, to guard, and to keep you. One we'll here. It says she will, and guess what? She's going to do something else. She's also honoring you. If you what? This right here, this word if, very important word in the Bible. It means there's a condition. You can go, ah, oh, wisdom's just going to honor me. No, no, hold on. If. If. If you embrace her. So the question is, are you embracing wisdom? Are you prizing wisdom? Are you loving wisdom? Or are you forsaking and turning away from wisdom, and then inevitably forgetting wisdom, which means you knew what the was the wisdom was. You just chose not to love and prize and embrace wisdom enough to apply her to your life and walk in her ways. Wisdom here actually intends to honor and exalt people. The problem is people don't want to embrace her. Do you see that? People don't want to live wise. So they miss out on what? 
honor. They miss out on what? Being exalted. They miss out on what? Protection. They miss out on what? Being kept from certain trials and tribulations and troubles that God intended to keep them from, right? So pay attention. When you read the Bible, if you see a certain character or a certain thing uh, having multiple descriptions or doing multiple things, it's helpful to highlight those. So like what I did here, I told you I'd explain as I went, I'm doing my best. As I did here, right, Solomon is told by David to do certain things. There's a list. There's multiple things. He tells him, don't forsake, love, prize, embrace, get wisdom. Okay, that forms a picture of what I should do with wisdom. Well, what does wisdom do for me? Well, we saw the list in, in these three, four verses. Wisdom keeps and guards and, and exalts and honors you, but you know, it's based on this condition, if. In other words, having the protection and honor of wisdom starts with your decision to love or turn away. Really. So, uh, this is more about when you see a list in Scripture, a certain, uh, you know, multiple actions done by one person, multiple things happening to something, multiple descriptions about an event or a person. Highlight those. It'll really give you a clearer picture of what's happening so you have a fuller sense of, um, you know, the meaning of the text, all right? By the way, if I didn't already say it, I said it in the beginning, I think, uh, check out our free 40-day Bible study program. It's linked in the description below or at aboveapproachministry.com. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next walkthrough.